Welcome back to Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Talking Tax, Talking Tax with Tom Yamachika. Tom Yamachika is the president of the Tax Foundation of Hawaii, and he comes on every couple of weeks to tell us um, how, our, how our taxes are doing. And that means, often it means, how the legislature is doing on our taxes. Well, good morning, Tom. Welcome to the show. Morning, Jay. Glad, glad to be on as usual. Great. So, uh, you know, it's been quiet, but tell me, you know, what the echoes are and what the, you know, future is uh, for the legislature and thus for taxes in Hawaii. Sure. Um, the, uh, uh, the, the silence is kind of ominous, actually, because uh, the, uh, the legislature's schedule for the rest of the year has come out. They're going to be reconvening uh, next week, Monday, the 22nd. Uh, they do not have... Um, any time scheduled for conference committees. So uh, that makes me think that whatever is going to be considered is uh, predetermined. Uh, something like the special session of 2017. Everybody knew uh, that when, once the, uh, the bill came out, there would be little or few, you know, fewer little changes. Uh, it would be passed as is and that, and that would be it. Um, you know, people testified to no end, but uh, you know, no changes were allowed and the bill was passed as is. So uh, I'm just kind of wondering if we've got something in the works this time. One of the things that uh, obviously will need to be considered is uh, the 650 million or so that has been put into the rainy day fund, into the rainy day fund uh, from the federal money that uh, was given to the state on condition that we spend it by the end of the year. Okay. Um, when the, when, when the legislature was last in session at the beginning of, the, of this month, uh, apparently they couldn't figure out what to do with it. So, uh, so they parked it uh, in the rainy day fund so the governor could, uh, couldn't get his hands on it, or at least so they thought. Uh, one, one senator wrote an op-ed basically saying, well, come on, guys. I mean, this, this is what we should be doing with the money. We should be giving... Uh, COVID relief to our citizens rather than squirreling it away. Um, but that, of course, is just one senator's opinion. And, you know, given that she felt the need to speak out like that, it's probably not the majority opinion. So we're going to see something else happen. Hmm. Very interesting. I mean, I, uh, very, very perceptive, I think. Uh, if, if the majority felt that way, there would be no, no purpose in the op-ed. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Very interesting. <clears throat> but you know what, you know, there's something, I, I know that the um, uh, Sunshine Law does not apply to the legislature, although there has been discussion of that um, from time to time. Um, and, uh, you know, conference committees um, are, you know, beyond our reach, essentially. They, they do what they do, and uh, we may see a little of it, but we really have no say in, in, in the proceedings or uh, in the result of a conference committee meeting. On the other hand, committee meetings themselves uh, are open to the public and the public testifies and submits written testimony and the like. Um, and it, it, it's troubling um, to hear that this is going on behind the scenes. It's troubling that, um, you know, they, they didn't want to have a session for whatever analysis they made on COVID. I'm not sure it was right. Um, and then we didn't have we didn't have any really any public discussion about um, these issues, especially in a time of crisis. That would have been better to hear from people. Instead, yeah, lobbyists uh, visit uh, legislators and legislators talk to each other, and and the process is is opaque. And then it pops out without a conference committee and uh, predetermined. And uh, there you have it. Um, does that trouble you, Tom? Of course it does. I mean, you would like to think that, uh, you know, if you're taking the trouble to go down and testify before the legislature, you have at least a chance of, you know, shaping the final product. Um, but uh, apparently there are, uh, this, this is, at least according to what I'm guessing, uh, this has been foreclosed for this session. That's what it sounds like. So, um, okay, so the 650 million, I mean, where, which, which way is the wind blowing in that? It sounds to me like there is really no issue, no issue at all that the state of Hawaii must take that out of the rainy day fund and spend it on its citizens. Plenty of discretion on how to spend it, but there's really no discretion on not spending it. Um, and that really has to be part of their agenda here when they reopen, don't you think? 
Yeah, and guess where it's going? It's probably going to uh, public employee unions. Oh, really? I mean, they, they, what, they've what had, they have, say that? Uh, we, we have the, uh, at least three of the Hawaii public employee union leaders, uh, HSTA, HEA, UPW, uh, they're, all, they're all saying uh, they won't agree to uh, 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 price reductions. They won't agree to layoffs. They won't agree to furloughs. Uh, they, they want the increases that were negotiated before COVID-19 ever became known as a, as a household term like it is today. Um, and, and, they, and they are not budging. Uh, at least that's the position they have staked out in the publicly released letters that they have, uh, you know, that, that they're out there. If, if that issue had come up in, in a committee um, where the public you know, could testify, who, who would be there? Aside from the unions themselves who were making that demand, um, who would be there? Who, who would be opposing um, this particular you know, uh, method of spending the money? Uh, we might. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, depending on how they wanted to fund their increases. Uh, if, if there was a tax increase uh, proposed, we would certainly be there saying, you know, this is not a good idea, uh, which re remains our opinion. What, what would you say to them if you were there testifying on that issue? Uh, I would say, look, guys, you have to consider the economic engine that is spitting out all of your taxes in the first place. If you're going to squeeze it further and put more brakes on the economy, uh, then the, the result is that the engine is going to spend slower and it's going to give you even less revenue than you have now, which isn't, which isn't much. Yeah. What about fairness? That, that, that also, well, I mean, f fairness goes, goes several different directions. I mean, like the, the teachers are going to say, well, it's, it's, it's fair for us to have the increases we bargained for. It's fair to have a, a wage commensurate with other jurisdictions in the, in the United States that are, that are performing similar, you know, where, where teachers are performing similar work. It's fair uh, to, to have uh, the people in the government who have uh, been downtrodden for so long finally get a living wage or, or, or you know, arguments to that effect. Yeah, but it's at the expense of others who get nothing. That, that troubles me. I mean, I think we should all be pitching in. Don't they tell us almost every day that we're in this together? And that means everybody has to sacrifice something so that everyone can survive. Well, I mean, that's, that's definitely not uh, what, what Corey Rosenley said in, uh, in his op-ed that was published in Civil Beat. He, he's, he was basically saying shared sacrifices for the birds for the, you know, for the reasons I stated. Wow. <clears throat> okay. Well, that's something um, and troubling. So, uh, so this bill uh, would would simply take it out of the radio, the, the rainy day fund, and what spend it, or would it go to some government agency or executive to allocate it uh, in the way either the, the way the unions want or the way other members of the public want? Oh, well, we don't know. We haven't seen the bill yet. I, I, don't th way. I don't think it's. I don't think it's been drafted. I mean, it'll, it'll probably be inserted into something uh, that that's already alive, um, uh, because you know, really, we we weren't uh, dealing with a uh, a rainy day fund appropriation before, right? Uh, and yeah. not of this, not of this magnitude. Well, that's that's um, also troubling that we're going into a session where there won't be the normal process where a bill will be considered that we have not even yet seen, that will be tacked on you know, quietly onto another bill. It won't be easy to find it even. Um, that's all backroom stuff, isn't it? Well, of course it is. I mean, we, and we've seen that before. Uh, there's uh, you know, some uh, lawsuit activity going on uh, you know, by Common Cause and the League of Women Voters to uh, to, to try to kind of roll back this log rolling, but uh, it's still in the courts. Uh, there has been no, uh, you know, decision as of as of yet, and you know, and and we've seen in the past uh, legislators make open threats that you know if the judiciary does something they don't like, 
uh, you know, their budgets at risk. Yeah, that, that's actually happened, hasn't it? That has happened, yes. That's and, 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 the, and, the Senate, and the Senate Majority Leader on, uh, on a, a civil beat, um, uh, I don't know whether it was some kind of event that they had, but but it was it was it was videoed and uh, and the video is available for for all to see. Uh, you know, he, he basically said that in no uncertain terms. Institutional retribution. That's not appropriate in, in our government or our democracy. Well, I mean, there are checks and balances. Yeah, somebody can stop it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so each, well, each, you know, each branch is supposed to be a check and balance on the other branch, and there are three branches, judiciary being one of them. So, so yes, I mean, the legislature is within its rights in, uh, you know, doing something to to check the judiciary if they if they uh, think that the judiciary has done something wrong. Usually, usually, however, it's by uh, substantive you know, statute. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. If, 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 the, if the power if the of the purse. Right. If if the judiciary has interpreted a law wrongly, they they can amend the statute. Yeah, that's that, simple. That's the normal. That's the that's normal. That's civilized way to do it. Yeah. yeah. Now, I mean, if, if there if it's a constitutional provision, of course, the it's, it's a little harder. But uh, go get an amendment to the constitution, I suppose. Yeah. Um, well, I you know that uh, that's troubling, uh, and you know, and particularly in light of the fact that the checks and balances in the federal government are broken. Um, that's a, that's a, a euphemism. It's much worse than that. Um, but you hate to see that the checks and balances here are not working properly not working on a substantive basis, working on retribution rather than, um, you know, correction of a law that legislators feel um, is wrong. Um, anyway, uh, I'd like to go to tax now for a moment. Uh, last time we sure. talked, we talked about a $2 billion shortfall, uh, the Council on Revenues uh, and dire predictions. And, and I would say in, in view of the, the resurgence of COVID in our community, um, which was predictable because the reopening was maybe didn't have a plan. Uh, even uh, what Glenn Wakai made a comment at the Chamber of Commerce uh, webinar uh, a couple of days ago to the effect that uh, he was concerned that the state did not have a plan to reopen. Uh, so if you re reopen without a plan, just as on the national level, um, you get a resurgence is what you get among other things. And so uh, we have a resurgence and it may be worse not clear, depends on, I suppose, on many factors. Um, and that means that if you, if you put the Council on Revenues together today, right now, and ask them to update their $2 billion shortfall, okay, it probably would be worse, wouldn't it? Um, so if, did we solve the $2 billion shortfall they talked about before? Um, and if so, how? And what would we do if it was more than that? Um, I, I don't, I, I think you're right in that there is no, uh, there is no coherent plan. Uh, I have, I haven't seen one. Uh, I, I think there was something, um, that the governor had posted on his website, uh, with, which had, you know, lots of you know, neat, neat little rainbow colors on it. Um, but, uh, what wasn't clear from it is, when we go to the next stage of the plan, and, and, it, and it was meant to be loosey goosey, uh, so that it would be data driven, and and uh, you know you'd make the decision on whether to go to the next phase 14 days from when the first uh, from when, the, when the previous phase started. Uh, but but the problem there is that you know if you're a business, and you depend on tourism like most businesses in Hawaii do. Uh, what can you plan on? You don't know when the tourists are coming back. Uh, you don't know when the, the, the flights would be able to resume uh, without a you know 14-day quarantine. Um, how how do you know when people are coming back? If you have you know even a, a food establishment, let's say in Waikiki, uh, where most of your uh, your revenue comes from uh, from tourists, uh, how long can you survive on takeout uh, with uh, and, and come in a business when uh, what, what you're primarily geared for, the tourist business is not showing up. Let and, me, and let I, me answer that. <clears throat> no, we don't know. 
Um, and the way to make those things happen is public confidence. Uh, public confidence on the mainland about, you know, among people who would be tourists and public confidence here uh, with people who would be consumers um, and outside consumers. So how do you generate public confidence in a time where COVID has ruled? And the answer is uh, you do a lot of things to make it safer. You do everything you can to make it safe. You spend money actually to make it safer. And then you publicize that. You say, we have done X, Y, and Z. It is as safe as it can be. Uh, come back to Hawaii. It is a lot safer here than other places. You get the numbers down, um, you get the safety up. And one of the interesting things that we, we found um, this week is that DBED is doing a webinar on ultraviolet light as a way to kill the virus. This is done in some hospitals now in the country, but it's not ubiquitous. <clears throat> and uh, apparently the science has developed to the point where you can use ultraviolet light in controlled circumstances. There's a certain danger to it. Um, and you can kill the virus in institutional settings. Um, so hotels are a, a really good example of that. So if I do that and a bunch of other things and I control the, the flights in and I can I test people in a, in a humane way, um, and I keep the, the numbers down, um, then I can go out to the public and say, we've done all these things and it is safer, come on back. Have we done that? No, we haven't done that. Uh, and even within our own population, you have, uh, you have I think, pockets of people who are uh, resisting being cooped up. They're saying their civil liberties are being infringed, which is you know, not, not an insubstantial argument. Well, I'll tell you, I have an, an argument too. My civil liberties are being violated when they come out. Uh, so there's a balance there at best. And if I were sitting on the bench, I would say, sorry, um, but the community civil liberties are more important than your individual civil liberties. Well, but, but at what point? I mean, right now uh, we have, I think, five uh, new COVID cases a day uh, among a, a state with a, a population of a million and a half. Uh, that's, it's, it's, it's not like, you know, New York or Arizona, um, where, where there, you know, where there people dr are dropping like flies, or at least they oh, were. Oh, but it's on the way up though. I mean, not every day, but it, it, it has a trend up now. And uh, the problem there is that the average Joe, I'm the average Joe, uh, sees that as the possibility of a geometric increase. If it's up, it could be way up the next day. You don't know. If it's down, you know, you're not nearly as concerned. Yeah, so I mean, there's, uh, you know, prediction or guessing needs to be done in, in any event. Uh, the, you know, the real um, rub is, you know, what do you do? Do you, uh, do do take an extreme position and lock everybody down, uh, and and I think the uh, there was a survey from Wallet Hub or somebody like that who came, that that came out and said we had like the you know the fourth or fifth most restrictive uh, set of lockdowns in the country uh, out of out of the fifty states. Um, so we're we're kind of you know getting up there in terms of abridgment of civil liberties. Um, in, in part. I think you, you need to trust your people, or at least most of them, uh, to do the right thing. So you can say, well, okay, yeah, you, you can come out, but you but but you got to wear masks here and there and stay six feet apart and wash your hands every so often. Uh, and and you, you can control things, get them down to a manageable level. We're, we're, we're definitely not at the point uh, where we're overwhelming our hospitals. And, you know, part of the justification uh, for the lockdowns has has been, you know, uh, Governor Ige in his in his emergency proclamation saying, "Oh my God, we have this, we have this, we have this terrible pandemic. It's 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 going to go up uh, and overwhelm our hospitals, and we can't have that." Um, but nothing close to that is happening, and and that is why uh, there are lawsuits challenging uh, the uh, uh, the uh, the lockdown. There's, there's one in federal court. Hmm. I just filed a few days ago. Well, you know, the problem is with all of that, uh, we're, we're, not, we're not putting ourselves in a position and we are not 
actually in a position where we can say um, to the world that this is a really safe place. Uh, we're not saying that to ourselves. And um, um, certainly we can't say that to you know, the rank and file in the community that, yeah, it's safe, don't worry, go out to a restaurant. Um, and so, I mean, without that, I, I, I don't know, I agree with you. There can't be a plan because it's, it's so vague and you don't have public confidence. So with all of that, Tom, um, you know, there, you know, the other side of it, by the way, is you, you target certain industries and certain activities. You know, like, like we said that some activities were essential, you know, we started this thing. Well, you could go out and you could say some activities, you know, we should encourage. Um, and we could probably make a list. If you and I got in a room, we could probably make a list. Um, yeah, and, and, I, I, think, and I think somebody there. needs to come there. I mean, to come out and say, you know, look, guys, uh, here's our plan. We're going we're gonna to reopen uh, uh, quarantine in X number of days. Uh, we're we're going to expect, you know, this, this, and this to happen. Uh, we're taking the following steps. We're going to have thermal scanners at the airports. We're going to have, um, you know, uh, people who, you know, cough or sneeze, you know, yanked off and, and put in a room until we can figure out uh, that they're really, in fact, okay. Uh, we're going to have testing. We're going to have this. We're going to have that. Uh, right now, none of the none of the elements are being publicized, if even if there are, they, they are present. I, and I don't know if they are. Yeah. So you know, the trick about it is um, you've got to solve this, or or at least people have to believe you're solving this before you ask them to reopen. Now, in the state of Hawaii, uh, I think the argument would be this argument would be extremely persuasive. You guys, we need your help. Because if we don't get help from the community, we're not going to be able to reopen the economy, especially the tourist economy. With your help, if you follow these rules and join together with us on this, we will be able to reopen our major, our major economic driver. So how about pitching in? How about a little sacrifice? How about following the rules? I think that would be very persuasive, don't you? Yeah. Um, what, what, uh... I know one of the complaints um, that you know in in the Black Lives Matter incident, uh, when when you know those shootings happened, uh, we were waiting for national leadership to kind of step up to the uh, to the camera and say, you know, hey, let everybody, let's have some calm. Why don't we on on a local level have have the governor or somebody step up to the camera and say what you just said, namely, you know, we can beat this thing, uh, but we need your help. Uh, I mean, Cuomo did it. Um, you know, he's he's out there all the time. Uh, where, where's Ige? Well, I, the, you know, I'm, uh, the civil beat. Just before the show, I was looking at it, and I saw a bunch of legislators, uh, and maybe th there are some officials. I don't think he was in the picture. There was a picture of people who from government who were uh, determined to make a program on um, police abuse and violence here in Hawaii. Um, you know, the political issue of the day, if you will, happening all over the country. Um, but is that of primary importance right now in Hawaii? We, we don't have, you know, all that much. We have, we have some, but we don't have all that much uh, police violence um, or abuse. And, um, and you know, in, in better times, maybe we, could, maybe we should really focus on it. But right now, uh, the, the focus is getting our economy started again. And thus, the focus should be on getting our people confident of, uh, of our efforts in dealing with COVID. So well, I well, said well, to that myself, plus... why, why are you doing this? Why are you spending time? Why do we have uh, ink running all over this? Um, we, we should be dealing with the real crisis, don't you think? Well, I mean, you, you, you certainly need to have people confident enough to, to go out into the streets once again. Uh, and and you know not being afraid that a cop is going to put a knee on their throat and 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 you know uh, kneel on it for nine minutes, uh, you can't have that. I mean, pe people have to be you know feeling safe enough to go out do doing their business uh, and knowing that the police are there to protect and to serve, as opposed to you know God knows what else. So yeah, I mean maybe maybe some uh, ink and an effort on the part of our legislatures is justifiable, um, but you know maybe just just kind of to the point where 
uh, you, 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 you need, you know, the police chiefs of the various counties to say, okay, you know, this is our revised policy on uh, on, on the use of strangleholds. This is our revised use of po policy on the on deadly force. You know, Honolulu, for example, has been sending the wrong messages. They, they've they've put out uh, a document uh, with with our uh, stranglehold policies, and it's all redacted. You can't see you can't see what the hell it is. My goodness gracious! More of the same opaque. Hey, before we close, let's talk about one other thing, which is dear to your heart and mine, and should be dear to all of our hearts. What about taxes? What about state taxes, which traditionally have been among the highest in the nation, uh, and our budget is in trouble, uh, and the legislature is about to go into session again? No man's life, no woman's life is, is uh, what, safe without when the legislature is in session. What can we expect, if anything, about increases in taxes? Oh my gosh. Um, to well, deal I'm, with I'm a, sure the it's going to be discussed. It's, I'm sure it's going to be discussed. The uh, you know, the $65 million question is, what, if anything, are they going to do? Okay, hopefully uh, the answer is that, you know, they're, they're going to do little, if anything, uh, uh, with respect to raising taxes. Uh, but we, you know, it's probably already decided, whatever the answer is, it's already been decided. You just have to kind of find out what it is. And uh, unfortunately, uh, that's what we can look forward to in the, you know, in the uh, latter part of June, beginning part of July, when, when our legislature resumes its session and kind of proceeds apace to its uh, adjournment. Yeah, and then the press will cover it as a, um, as a fact, okay, this has been done. I'm not sure what, what will happen on the governor's desk with re respect to a veto, but the likelihood it is he'll have no choice but to sign off on that. And then you and I will comment on it. We'll say what we think about it because there have to be two hands clapping here, Tom. And you and I, especially you, are the second hand. Thank you very, <laughs> thank you very much for coming down. Always enjoy these discussions and I look forward to the next one with some trepidation. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Yamachika, president of the Tax Foundation of Hawaii. Thank, thank you. you for having me on the show. Aloha.